Hello, folks, and welcome to SFX Zero, Profile Production, and it's part Sakura Succubus 6. So let's, let's do that and jump in where we left off last time. So, if you me forcefully, apparently, take the uh, kids from me while we're alone. Something like that. And the soul in is with a um, musical giggle that if you mean in she presses my lips to my own press presses my lips to my own to claim them. What? <laughs> Isn't it she presses her lips to my own to claim them? Yeah, but her mouth wet and uh, wanting. I sight against the case and pull the Fumi's body more closely against mine. Rest, uh, I rest one hand against the back of her head, my fingers spray throughout her inky hair while my other hand rests against the small of her back. The Fumi's kimono slips uh, from about her shoulders when I shift her and her chest press against my more firmly than ever before. I can feel her softness even through the fabric of my clothes. She feels amazing and she smells amazing too. The sounds she is making me while she kisses me. That's just uh, she closes her eyes. <laughs> well, reading uh, such things uh, is uh, actually hard to do uh, with perfection. They are so incredibly seductive, it's all I can do to stop myself from stripping her of her cumbersome kimono right here, right now. Her tongue tangles with mine, and I can taste her saliva. If her moans are heated, it certainly can't be called demure, and her flushed face suggests she's looking for something more than a few kisses. As mild-mannered as a Fumi might appear, I know she has a not-so-secret wild side. She can be pretty pushy when she wants, but I think her inc unbridled passion makes her even more appealing. I love both sides of Ifumi. It feels like it's been a long time since last I was able to indulge in my own, my feelings for her. Now I've been afforded the opportunity, I don't want to, le to ever let her go. Not until we're both fully satisfied. Breakfast the following morning is an unusual state affair. The six of us, Stephanie, Elizabeth, Marina, Hazel, Hifumi, and I are assembled in the dining room at our respective places at the overlong table. Wintry sunlight filters in through the windows, which illuminates the silverware that's been laid out. The table is ordered set for breakfast and groans beneath the weight of it all. Fruits in uh, turrets, piles of freshly baked croissants, all sorts of preserves, but none of us are doing much eating. This is really good. The croissant uh, is baked to perfection. It's so flaky and oh, the bananas are just right. They're firm but not too firm and they're so flavorful. The food is amazing. Your wealthy young lady sure knows how to live. I might not act much like a princess, but I never get tired of eating like one. Um, num num. Um. I stand corrected. Ace has eaten plenty, she's never been one to get uh, bogged down by sentiment, but the rest of us are excusing a bit more restraint. I feel a bit despondent myself, to tell the truth. This will be the last morning I spend in Stephanie's company. My flight is scheduled later today. In a couple of hours, I'll be whisked away to the airport alongside my succubus companions. Then we board our flight and we return to Japan. 
I've enjoyed my time in Astoria immensely, and no small part thanks to Stephanie's company. But all good things have to come to an end. I need to get back to my old life, and I need to get back to work. I'd like to meet up with Cosmos and Ayu again too, to see how they're holding up. And I need to try to smooth things over with my mother. Once I return to Japan, I have no excuse not to call her. I can't exactly live on a per perpetual vacation life's about more than fun games and going on dates. I'll slip back into my day-to-day -day routine soon enough and Stephanie will return to hers. I wonder if I ever see her again. It seems unlikely given her status as a princess. I don't know what a princess do exactly. You, despite being so young, is a queen, not a princess. But I imagine Stephanie's schedule must be packed. She won't have any time when I leave to arrange another meeting with me. We'll be off different sides of the world more than a 13 hour flight away. 13 hour. Does it actually place take 13 hours to go all across the world? I mean, I've not been uh, yeah, outside my own country many times. Uh, I've been uh, a few times, but I know I went half across the world and that didn't take 13 hours. <laughs> well, let's continue. Now, how does that make me feel? I uh, well, I will miss her, but I will, but I'd be glad to be back in Japan. So uh, this is a double one, but I will miss her. So obviously, I miss Stephanie a lot. I had a good time. The uh, I had a good deal of fun with this last uh, fortnight, and it seems a shame to shame it uh, should be cut short so soon. I suppose it's inevitable though, but still. I feel so gloomy I can't bring myself to eat very much, though the food looks delicious. Ah, these poached eggs are great too, they're still all runny just like I like them. And they taste great on toast. I just can't stop eating. It's all super yummy. I'm gonna have to hit the gym ASAP when I get back to Japan. Um yum yum. And it sounds uh, pretty delicious too. If Pesos running commentary is anything to go by. Yeah, I could try it to at least uh, at least one pastry. Perhaps it uh, quelled the anxious knot in my stomach. Seems kind of thoughtless though to stand digging in given the gravity of the situation. I once definitely lost the uh, memory of me with pastry crumbs about my lips and strawberry yams smeared on my shin. Hmm. I bothered this for a few moments, waiting upon the importance of a sorrowful goodbye against scrolling on my stomach when... You're okay. Oh. I look at Stephanie curiously, my fingertips falling away from the plate of uh, croissant arranged airfully in the middle of the table. What's it? The, what is it, Steffi? I was just thinking, um... I don't mean to ruin your breakfast, not when this will be your final meal in Astoria Palace, but... On this subject, I fear I cannot remain silent. Okay, I, know, I think I know where this is going. I wish only for you to know that in uh, your absence, I will miss you dreadfully. I've had so much fun uh, with you all that I don't know how to best to express it. I must thank you, mistress. Stephanie inclines her uh, head in a human direction for teaching me so very much about Karuta and being so very <laughs> patient with me. Oh, don't mention it there. I had a lot of fun myself. I would like to thank you as well, Marina and Hazel, for allowing me to grow so close to Hiroki. Your selflessness is truly wonderful. It's quite all right. I'm too old, you see, to indulge in pretty jealousy. I had a more important affairs upon my mind than that. Fine, fine. Okay. Here's a reassure Stephanie throughout the month for masticated food. 
You're cute, so I can forgive you uh, anything, even murder. In a face like yours, it's impossible to hate you. In fact, I'd love to color with you myself, if I ever got the chance. <laughs> well, um, Stephanie blushed while holding one hand to her chest. Thank you, I think I will take that as a compliment. And as for you, Hiroki? Stephanie fixes her attention upon me once more, her green eyes shining brilliantly like shooting stars. You have given me more than perhaps uh, you realize. <coughs> Though we were together but a short while, you taught uh, me what it feels like to live as an ordinary woman. And you taught me too how wonderful it is to fall in love. I shall never forget the time we spent together, and I shall never not be grateful to you for your kindness. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Stephanie bows her head towards me deeply in such a reverent motion I find myself flushing. It's fine, Stevie. You don't need to be so complimentary. I'm your partner, not some uh, federal warlord. I'd rather you treat uh, me like an equal, and I want you to be happy too. I'm aware of that, yes. You made it blatantly apparent in all you have said and done to me. You're so kind and considerate, being with you makes my heart sing. I never thought I would grow to love a man so intensely, but you, Stephanie Sniffles, you're special. Being parted from you will be a difficult challenge for me to bear, but I shall endure it to the best of my abilities. Please do. I can't stand the thought of you moping uh, for my sake. Uh, far rather you smile. Y yes, I thought you might say that, so I resolved to do my best. Worry not, Hiroki. A love challenge is the harder the better. I not want to run away from a fight, even if I love if love should prove to be the most difficult fight I ever faced. I promise I won't succumb to loneliness or despair, no matter how far away we may be. I vow that one day I shall see you again no matter what. And then we will make a brand new life together, that is what I want more than anything in the world. Being with you is my newfound dream, Hiroki, and I will do all in my power to make it come true. I'm not going to give up, just you wait. And in a manner truly in keeping with her blue blooded statue, Stephanie tips back her head. Oh ho ho ho. And lots. It's a proud, hearty sort of love, which uh, doesn't really suit Stephanie, but yeah, it uh, consoles me all the same. That love tells me that Stephanie really will be fine. It'll probably be a long time before we next reunite, uh, but I'm sure everything will work out for the best. Stephanie is the princess of all, and in all the fairy tales I know, they always wind up achieving the happily ever afters. After eating breakfast, I pack my belongings and meet up with my succubus Ritune in the palace gardens. Once the list has confirmed we have all our possession, we then uh, clamber into the sleek black car which is uh, awaiting us outside the palace. Transported by this expensive luxurious vehicle, I make my journey back to the airport alongside the Fumi, Hazel and Marina. Stephanie and Alita also accompany us on our journey so they can see us off at the airport. Upon arriving at the airport, a moderate, sophisticated building, all small glass, Elizabeth helps us unload our luggage from their trunk. Elizabeth carries out the luggage into the airport proper despite my protest as a man. I feel like I ought to be doing more to help uh, than sets our cases down. Once Elizabeth is finished with all the busy work, Stephanie approaches us 
and the brace was in turn first manila, then Hesa, then Ifumi, then me. I'll miss you, my dear Hiroki. Stephanie murmurs against my chest as she holds me, her cheek pressed against me. Please do not be a stranger. Write to me if you can, and I will hasten to respond. It might be some time until we are able to reunite, but I never forget the time we have spent together. This is a promise. I promise too. I had a great time with you, Steffi. Thanks for being such a great hostess. Her off the top of her blonde head and inhale a whiff of her fruity shampoo. And such a great girlfriend too. Uh, oh my. Stephanie draws back flushing. I, I doubt I'm such a great girlfriend, really. I don't have any prior experience. I'm not a self-possessed woman like Marina. I'm not uh, confident like Hazel or elegant like my mistress. I, I still have uh, much to learn when it comes to interacting with the opposite sex, but I mean to do my very best. I, I only hope you will continue to wait for me. Of course I will. Don't you worry. You're cute enough that you're worth sticking around for. Hiroki. Stephanie all but swoon at my compliment. Her face sunset pink. <laughs> you're so cool. I really am glad I met you. With the goodbye said, I should... It should be time for me to head into the airport, but before I can, a few fingers close... Uh, about the back of my shirt. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely again with a few more words of farewell. He glanced back behind my shoulder, intrigued, and is that a picture we had before? I don't think so. So uh, let's save here. I do believe this actually will be the next episode will be the last one. We'll see a little bit how it goes. But that's all I have for the girls of the six. This time I'll say it like I'm sure. See you next time. Bye bye.